Welcome to the African Youth Voices Podcast, where we explore the opinions of the youth of Africa. Here's your host, Sufyan Chubani. Welcome, everyone, to the second episode of the African Youth Voices Podcast. Today, we're going to look at the Moroccan National Debate Team and speak to two debaters from that team. One of the debaters is from, uh, Yasmin, and she is from Casablanca. The second debater is Manan and she is from FES. So before we get started with this episode, let's just start with some quick introductions. So Menen, would you be kind enough just to tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe your name, your age, where do you go to school, and finish that off with how you got involved into the Moroccan national debate team. Yes, of course. So um, hi everyone, my name is Mkhrigani, I am 17 years old. I live in past Morocco and I study in a school called Vulegan, it's a private school. Um, how I got involved with debating is actually quite interesting in my part. It, it wasn't intended at all. I knew nothing about debating, to be honest. Like, I just had this idea for movies. I didn't have a first-hand experience with it. And one day, I looked up the website. I applied. I got into development team, of course. I stayed with them for nearly a year. And then, after a lot of competitions and hard work, I finally managed to get into the national team. And I'm really proud that we will get the chance to participate in this year's WSTC. Thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction. Um, next, we'll go to Yasmin. So Yasmin, the same question. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, your school, your age, where do you live, and how you got involved into the Moroccan national debate team. Um, so hello, I'm Yasmin Lafke. I'm from Casablanca and I'm turning 17. Uh, I go to school in Ibn Yasmin Public. It's a public school here in Hassani, Casablanca. Um, so about debate, uh, to be honest, I knew ne nothing about it, like even the movies and stuff like that. I, did, I didn't know what this is all about, you know. However, uh, in uh, ninth grade, I guess, I got involved in those kind of exchange programs and stuff like that. And it's there that I have heard of something called debating so I got interested and I just searched it in the internet even though like I really didn't knew anything about it and I found the Morocco national debate team and Mr. Sufian was like really kind by giving me the opportunity even though like I was really um I don't know like zero into that so they gave me the opportunity to be in the development team and it's uh, by this way, just like Mene, that uh, I was able to just develop myself a bit into that and uh, explore this world along with our amazing coach and teammates and be able to uh, participate in the WSDC now and be in the national team. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Yasmin. So you guys must be very excited. You guys have the world championship. Also must be feeling a little bit nervous about the, the World Schools Debating Championship. For our viewers and listeners out there who don't know what that is, this is basically the biggest competition for national debate teams. Um, what nations can only send one team, so only five debaters can be on a team. So I know you guys must be a little bit nervous about that, but let's just step back a little bit. Tell us about like the moment you this, you found out that you're going to be on this team. How did you react? How did your parents react? How was the feeling when you found that out? So we'll go in opposite direction this time, and we'll start with Yasmin uh, first. Um, so to be honest, I was more than surprised because um, I I did not expect that. Here's the thing. I remember telling my parents that I just hope that somehow uh, in the tryouts for the WSDC 2023, I will have some kind of um, uh, opportunity. And I was being like, I, I will try to work harder this summer and improve myself and do that and that. So like, to be honest, I, I didn't like even think about it. I didn't even think that I was able to do so. And one day, uh, Mr. Sufian just contacted me and he was like, oh, I have a good news and he told me that I was able uh, I was able to join the national team and I was surprised so were my parents they were pretty proud of me and uh, I was pretty proud of myself a bit however I'm so excited and uh, scared in the same in the same time like would I be good enough would I not um so yeah that's pretty much it okay thanks um Menen, same question Okay, so basically when I sent out or when I sent out my application, I felt quite confident. And then there was the interview phase. I answered the question truthfully and honestly, I thought it was good. But like at the debating part, it was just, I was just so nervous and I couldn't say what I, what I wanted. So I was so scared. I was like, okay, maybe I wouldn't get it. 
and I did my best. And then I just arrived from school one day and I sent an email and he was like, okay, you got it. And I was really happy. And I and my dad did and they were really proud of me and they and they were and they were like this is a great decision that you have made so congratulations all right thank you thank you very much so uh the next question is you guys do a lot of dif different topics in the competition so like a lot of people don't understand but like for those of you who don't understand like every round is a different topic so you could be debating about like the coronavirus the ukrainian war about um many different topics so just as a personal question, we'll start with Menen first this time. What would you say are the most difficult topics you get? Like, what are these topics about? Oh, okay. So the most difficult topics, I have to give it to something that has to do with social movement. Because they are really delicate things. And you need to be careful on every single thing you said because it can use it can be used against you. So I think these are really <laughs> difficult, even in research. They are really, really difficult to tackle because there's different opinions. Even feminism is such a it's such a delicate concept. And before debating, I didn't I knew nothing about it, just a general idea. But like when you have to debate something like that, there's difference of opinion, so it's really difficult. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yes, being the same question. Um, for me, to be honest, the, the motions that I think are the most, uh, the more, the most difficult are the wild one, you know, those motions that are not very specific. And especially when those um, do not like, uh, they are wild and they are so different from our current, la current word. It's like, I don't know, me, uh, there was this uh, motion about technocracy and it's like, you, uh, we don't really know where it is going to be um, applied directly. So you know, like we can tackle a lot of um, uh, a lot of w in a lot of ways, and it has like a lot of impacts and stuff like that. And you cannot talk about everything, so you need to decide and uh, prioritize and all uh, all of that. So like it's it's a bit mind blowing and it's kind of um, just confusing, you know. So yeah, I think that those are the most. Okay, thank you very much. So next question is maybe we were a little we're going like gonna backtrack a little bit. So like being a national debater must be obviously a huge privilege because you know every country has a huge population. You know, populations can range from like 16 million people to like, for example, in Japan, they have 130 million people, but only like five people can be on this team. So the question, the next question I'm sure our viewers would be interested in listening in hearing is that like. Do you find it difficult to like maybe explain it to your friends or your teachers that what you're actually doing? Because sometimes like even with my family, I tell them that like, oh, this is the national team. They're just like, really? Like, do you guys have like Nike as your sponsor? I'm like, no, no, no. We're not like that national or that um, professional at that level. So do you guys find it difficult to explain to your friends and family what you're actually doing on this team or do they un kind of understand? We'll start with men at first. Okay. Yes, I do find it difficult. Like sometimes I, I have to explain what debating is before <laughs> I have to explain what a national team of debating. So um, my teachers get the meaning of debating, but they have a hard time understanding that I'm a part of the national team. Uh, my brother is the only one I get to understand the weight of the team that I'm in and the responsibilities that I have. But like other people, even within my family circle or my friends, they don't get it, honestly. <laughs> okay. And to not be them, but they don't. Okay, no problem. Thank you. All right, yes, me, same question. Um, I think like same and sometimes it's even worse, like especially with the friends. Like they're they're being like, oh, so you just discuss um so it's kind of a discussion and you're like, no, it's not just a discussion. It's, it's more than that. And it's like, how can you explain it? How, sometimes you get deeper and deeper into it and they're like, oh, uh, just forget. Okay, congratulations <laughs> for that, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, so to be honest, I think it, it is actually a, a kind of issue because I think that if we want to improve and if we want to really like go further, we need that to be like more popular. And why not? Why? I believe that like if more people knew about it, knew about debating and knew about this team, like 
there will be definitely like mm, more skilled people that like will have like prepared more and all so i think that's it is an issue that maybe will be solved and will be better in the future however i really thank like all the people and uh, like for example you Sufyan, which uh, who is like putting a lot of efforts into that and like wanting to um do this improvement and i believe that uh, it is something that is gonna happen with the time so yeah yeah, that's an interesting point that you brought up, Yasmin. So I guess this is kind of like a follow-up question. We'll have Yasmin answer first, and then we'll go to Manen. Why do you think like debate as an activity or as the extracurriculum club or competitions, why do you think it's so lacking in Morocco? I think that's something our listeners would be interested in hearing. So Yasmin, why do you think in your opinion? Um, so personally, I think it's just cultural, you know? So why is soccer such a big deal and debate is not, you know, when it's when it can be in the same level, you know, we uh, both our national teams, both are represented in their countries, especially that I know that a lot of people who are not maybe into sports can find themselves into debating. A lot of people are really talented, but they don't know that there is something that fits their challenge. So I think that um, uh, I had like a really good, uh, I was really lucky and I had a really good opportunity for knowing that there is something that can fit me, you know, and <laughs> I think that uh, uh, it's just about cultural, it's just about what uh, people talk about more and uh, unfortunately it's not debated. However, I think that is uh, not like uh, spreading the word around with no, will not have that much problem because I don't think it will collide and will go against something like in our culture or something like that. It's just that we, we don't know about it yet. Okay. So okay. yeah, I think, I think uh, it's a solve. Okay, thank you. Um, Madame, same question. Okay, I think it's um, mainly how we perceive a successful child. It is different from here and you as, for example, if you take two child and obviously universities, because universities in here, they don't regard extracurriculars as important. I mean, and this reflects on the way the child studies and uses their time. So basically here, um, your academic achievements are way, in, way more important in debating, debating or any athletic activity is just regarded as a waste of time that could be used towards your studying, which I think it's, I don't think it's really nice because uh, debating and a lot of things could build your character, which is something crucial for you and in your career and in your life as a whole, because it just builds your confidence. It, it builds up your critical thinking skills. You, you are able to develop a whole lot of set of skills that you won't be able to do in school, which is why um, if, you can, if you compare students who have something, an extracurricular, whether it was public speaking or debating or anything of this matter, they are really different. They, they are really well-spoken and brilliant. And you may even favor them when you're just for example, taking a job opportunity, you may favor them just because of the way they are composed and, and just speaking and they're just pleasant, which is why I think we should give um, these activities importance in our society. Okay, thank you very much. So as uh, being from Morocco and being a Muslim debater, um, also being an African debater, you guys have been to several international competitions. Have you guys faced any challenges of from being a Muslim debater or being a debater from Morocco or a debater from Africa? Because some debaters from Africa say we they face some challenges. We're just curious to know, maybe our audience would be also interested to know. Um, maybe they're interested in starting their own national debate team in a other different African country. So let's start with Menen for this question. Have you faced any difficulties in international competitions? Yes, of course. So obviously there is like the nervousness in the beginning and sometimes even though just I'm confident enough, like a person asks well, what is specifically my religion, it's just sometimes like I feel like people don't understand it enough. And even if they try to be kind, you just feel like they have some serious hypes against it. Uh, sometimes it's just frustrating. It's a bit sad. You try your best to educate someone if they're genuinely like just confused about something. But um, but. Other than that, and just the nervousness that I got used to on <laughs> on screen, online, or 
in present or like in person debating i think uh people generally are really nice they are really welcoming and they're just like a whole like com combination of cultures that merges is really nice so the, so i i don't think there were bad people or people who made the experience worse or i have any like issues with that so um i i think Overall, I didn't have any difficulty just because the people were nice and generally competition uh, hosts are nice. That's awesome. It's awesome to hear. Okay, uh, Yasmin, same question. Have you faced any difficulty? Um, yeah, so uh, to be honest, I, I, I won't say uh, that there was a kind of difficulty uh, coming from other people because of my, I don't know, uh, from where um, I come because here's the thing, like this debating word is really... Um, open to be honest i find that the people are really open-minded and like try to understand you and even like if sometimes it, it, what you are saying is very different or what you are saying is sometimes even wrong like i i think that's uh, most uh, most of the time if not always they try to understand first what you are saying before judging it personally the only problem that i can say that i have because i'm like from morocco is the language barrier because I believe that my English is not really good. It's not that good. And um, English prof like uh, language proficiency is like really um, important in this debate world. And I think personally, this is the only issue that I do have. And that maybe if I was not from Morocco, I wouldn't have had. Uh, otherwise, like, no, um, I think being from Morocco and debating uh, in all the world is, uh, is something that is pretty beautiful. <laughs> you know? Okay. All right. So just to follow up on that question, uh, once uh, this time we'll start with Yasmin. So we talked a lot about Morocco being from Morocco, but maybe our viewers and listeners are interested in hearing about a little bit more about Morocco. So could you just answer this question? Um, if you had to pick two things that make you proud to be Moroccan, what would it be? Oh, I see. Um, that's a pretty hard one, but I will say... Um... Uh, I will try to sneak out and say the culture because I know it's wild, I know it's vast, but I will definitely take the culture because it's really beautiful, it's really big, and uh, it's like when you take it and analyze it, you can um come up with like a lot of new perspective, a lot of new things, a lot of new ideas. So yeah, I, I mean, I will take with me my culture and try to explore it more. And um, uh, maybe the weather, uh, the weather of <laughs> Morocco, like, oh, uh, I don't know, being a Moroccan, I love its weather. It's really diverse, even though it's really hot now, um, but I, it won't change my mind. I mean, I really love its weather. You can have everything. You can uh, have the the cold, the hot, the, I, I don't know, the spring, everything <laughs> in the same time. So yeah, it's it's pretty beautiful here. So yeah, I think those are... Okay. All right. Uh, so Menon, same question. Two things about Morocco that make you proud to be Moroccan. The Moroccan people are so nice, are so hospitable and solitary. Uh, they stand together, are really hospitable, just hard. Area where like children are just playing, and if you get hungry, you go to another person and they would feed you themselves they they don't have enough money but they would do it just out of kindness of heart and um i just love how us moroccans would defend each other even if we don't know each other like you see someone being picked at and you just go out there and defend it is instilled in us the kindness um, parents we just carry and i think anywhere in Morocco I don't know I mean people are kind everywhere but it's just in Morocco something different and I also love the food obviously and um the whole area of Morocco like you go to is like you're in two different countries it's just really beautiful like that so I think that was this is what we pride in Morocco Okay. All right. So to maybe go on to the next question. So if you could change one thing about Morocco, what would it be? 
start with men and uh, with me okay so i would just definitely change some some of the culture not all of it because it is beautiful, but a part of it is bad. Sexism still happens in some areas. I would try to change something that are stereotypical, um, like that. So I think the biggest issue is just sometimes people undermine women or just are being sexist towards them is something that really hurts. But thanks God, things are changing. The newest, the newest generation is really accepting and they do not, they don't have such qualities, but I think the older generation still hold, holds on this traditional and uh, traditional view of women. So if it was one thing that I would change, it would be that. Okay, all right. Uh, Yasmin, one thing you would change about Morocco. Um, so to be honest, my answer is going to be a bit related to Menel's and it's basically, I don't know the exact word in English, but those strong beliefs in some people's mind. I mean, it's okay to have some beliefs. It's okay to uh, like have ideas and this, but it's not to just have those strong believes that what you have is the absolute truth and that everybody should be believing the same thing is that like every uh, everybody should be following you as like you are some upper um uh, creator that has like th this absolute truth and i think there's a lot of people in morocco has it it's like I don't know. It's like they feel they will not even discuss it with you. They will not even try to change it. See, it's like if you talk to them about this specific thing, they will just attack you. Like it's uh, like you are some evil uh, kind of creator. So, yeah, I think this is something that is here in Morocco and that maybe if we don't have it, if um, a lot of people try to discuss more and try to be a bit more open. We don't. We are not asking you to change your mind. We're just asking you to discuss. Uh, maybe we will be living in a much better world. Yeah, I think in Morocco and like Moroccan culture, there's a lot of times where you find yourself with like a topic that's kind of like the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to address it. Everyone wants to just ignore it, but you can't ignore it because it's just like a big elephant just sit, staring there, sitting you, uh, looking at you in the face. All right, thank you. Uh, so we just have two more yes, questions. Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Share your, your thoughts on that. Okay, all right. So yeah, it's just kind of like the elephants in the room. I think she was just agreeing on with that. All right, so uh, we just have two more questions and so we'll be done with our second episode. So we'll start with uh, Yasmin first. Um, the next question is, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Do you think you'll be you know, studying, working as a lawyer, working as an engineer, or are you still indecisive, uh, indecisive about your future plans and your career? Or do you already have what you want to do in mind? Um, so to be honest, I don't specifically know what I want to study. However, I'm pretty interested in everything related to technology or computer science or stuff like that. And of course, politics and, a bit, and, and the discussion and debating and all. However, when I, uh, like, in both cases, uh, whatever subject I studied, I believe that uh, in 10 years, I will be actually developing something in, in the subject that I chose. The something that like have, is for a cause, is for, some, uh, for, uh, for a specific reason, not just uh, some random thing. And that I will be just like having this peaceful life. Uh, this peaceful mind because I know that I am doing something that is right, that I am contributing in the development of my country or even of the world or if the subject. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's, that's the whole thing that I know <laughs> for now. Okay. All right. So uh, Menen, same question. Okay. I don't want to feel like I'm dreaming way too big, but hopefully in the next 10 years, I will have a really uh, good position and a nice cooperation, a big one in business management field, hopefully just starting also having a business on the side that I'm developing. I also hope to be an activist because I'm really interested in international relations and just all of that diplomacy. And um, hopefully I could have a speech in the UN, maybe not 10 years, maybe 30 years. <laughs> and um, 
yeah I, and also i would like to travel a lot so hopefully my jobs allow me to travel and explore different areas of the world and merge with new cultures and learn a lot lots and lots of different things <laughs> great 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 to hear from uh, both of you all right so the final question this is a question we ask all of our hosts who are from africa and also the youth so especially with you guys, you guys are kind of like a, a symbol of inspiration for I'm assuming for a lot of high school students who wanted to, to be on your spot, who wanted to try out for the team because, you know, tryouts is obviously a lot of people. You guys went through the tryouts, you went through the selection process and you, you got uh, put on the national team. So as a symbol of inspiration for Moroccans and also maybe fellow Africans, because there's a lot of African teams that don't even have a national team. So what would be a message that you would share with the youth of Africa, like a word of inspiration or word of advice? Um, I know this is kind of like a difficult question, so I will, I'm not going to put the pressure on anyone. Does anyone feel ready to answer this question? Sure. Okay, Mena, go ahead first. So I would like to say, um, never give up on what you're doing. And I'm talking, especially for me, it's debating. Um, even though you may feel like you're not doing well or there are a lot of people who are better than me, just remember that at some point they were in the same place as you, but they did not give up. They learned and they got out of the, they got out of their comfort zone and just learned and do not take criticism to heart. Always be open and always ask for criticism and anything that you may need to improve. And I'm pretty sure if you work hard enough, if you you are stubborn enough to not give up you would achieve anything you want and if you're a debater like me um, you would be able to participate and be the pride of your country and represent your country in many competitions so with that being said just please do not give up and um, just work on yourself work on yourself always and do not say I'm, I'm really good I don't need anything or I'm really bad I will not be able to just develop just always just work on yourself and study and learn that's what I would say thank you thank you that was a beautiful message for the youth of Africa so yes me and uh, the bar is set kind of high you're gonna have to do better than that what, what is your message for the youth of Africa yes me <laughs> <laughs> so I won't say I will be saying better. <laughs> However, yeah, it's fine. It's just a joke. In my own, <laughs> like I don't know. In my own experience, I would say firstly you're very lucky because here's the thing: how much people in your country or in uh, like knows about debating? It is already like a big step. The fact that you know about debating and that uh, uh, somehow you are listening to that. So like. It's, it's, uh, you are already already lucky because you are like from Africa or from this specific country and you know that uh, you know about debating and not like most of people from your country and you are not uh, from those other I don't know Europe or America because uh, there a lot of people know about debating and they have more competition between them so you are you can note that you are already very lucky then I can say that um, here's the thing you're not gonna be the best at first. Um, you are not going to be the first, you're not, maybe not the second, maybe not the third, maybe you are going to be fa failing and failing again, I mean, uh, but it's okay. I'm, yeah, maybe, yes, me, even yes, if me. you are we're, used... On we're, we're trying to motivate <laughs> people, not trying to get them to quit. <laughs> this is a motivational speech, not a, not a demotivational speech. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I see what you I'm mean, just, no, what I'm, I'm saying. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I, I know what I mean, you mean, but um, it's like it's for my experience for example uh, before debating i was used to always be the first and everything i interpret uh, 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 entertain however like when i started doing debate i started failing and to be honest i was really demotivated however like i did as i said like i did not expect to participate in the wstc however i just did not um let it down even though like i have uh, a really bad ang bad english i applied and i did the tryouts uh, even though the deadline passed me i i contacted you and i did the tryout so it's like even if you fail those little things just just do it do it and do it again one day you will succeed and even if you don't <laughs> it's still gonna be a good experience and um, finally, I just want to underline one thing is that if you want really to succeed, don't just try to follow others and to do like them. Because I see that a lot of people like in my entourage are 
or like in debate on some stuff like that are just trying to um do what they see because they imagine that oh this person did that and they succeeded oh i will be doing the same thing and i will succeed and i believe this is not the right way to do so because um what fits others will not fit you and it's like there is not one way to success um every person can draw their own path to success that will fit them and like even if you succeed you will feel comfortable because it's like your path it's something that fits you and it's not someone else's um thing so yeah i think that this is pretty much it this is what i think this is what i've learned um yeah thank you thank you so much okay thank you uh so i'm just going to comment on the last message that they both said um so i I've obviously i'm involved with the moroccan national debate team so i know a little bit more insight and i think what they said is really like powerful and motivational because i know for a fact that both of these young ladies they actually were selected for our development team and they were promoted through like hard work and determination and recognition from their coaches and recommendation from their coaches. So I think there's a lot of truth into what they're saying. And whoever is listening out there, whether you're from Africa, whether you're from Asia, whatever, I really think that you can take what they're saying as true and definitely something that they've experienced. And it's really true that they never gave up and they always kept coming back, even competitions where they went to and they didn't do very well, they never gave up. And I think that's like the, the underlining message of what they're saying is that you should never give up and pursue what you want. But with that being said, I just want to thank Manan and Yasmin again for joining us, sharing their thoughts and their opinions. And for all of you listening out there, thank you for listening. And we will see you on the next episode. We will try to feature another national debate team from Africa. So I guess on three, we can all just say goodbye to our listeners and our audience. All right. So three, two, one. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Everyone have a